Again, I just want to give you a reminder that this session is being recorded. Uh, my name is Stephanie Lewis with the Center for Urban Transportation Research, and I'd like to introduce um, our presenters today, both um, Julie Bond and Jason Jackman. Um, Julie joined the Center for Urban Transportation Research at the University of South Florida as a senior research associate in 2005. She serves as the program manager for the WalkWise Tampa Bay Tampa um, Tampa Bay, Bay Cycle and is the co-director of the New North uh, Transportation Alliance. Um, prior to joining Cutter, um, Ju uh, Julie worked for the Utah Transit Authority in Salt Lake City, where she effectively created and marketed various uh, TDM programs. She holds a Master's of Public Administration from the University of South Florida and a Bachelor's of Science in Business Administration from Southern um, Utah University. Our second presenter today is um, Jason Jackman. He is a um, research associate at the University of South Florida uh, Center for Urban Transportation Research. He uh, attended the uh, University of South Florida, earning his Master's in Public Administration. Um, Jason has served as a WalkWise presenter since 2010 and is the program manager for the Safe Routes to School program here in Tampa, Florida. Jason is an advocate for bicycle and pedestrian safe safety, as well as a, certi as a certified league cycling instructor for the League of American Bicyclists. Okay. Um, Jason and um, Julie will all ask for all questions at the end of their presentation. At this time, I'm going to turn the, the rest of the time over to them. Thanks, Stephanie. Uh, thanks for the introductions. And again, welcome, everyone. We're very excited today to present our WalkWise program, and we're going to talk about using audience response to major pedestrian education efforts. And uh, Jason and I are go both going to take turns presenting and talking about the program that we both uh, work on every day. So if you look at this first slide, I just wanted to mention the photo there is a very large group, and they are uh, watching Jason present the WalkWise presentation in the front of the room, and then they all took the WalkWise pledge that we're going to talk to you a little bit about. This program is an education component, and we are out uh, meeting and talking with the public every day about pedestrian, bicyclists, and driver safety. And I'm going to start the presentation, but here is a little bit of an overview so you know what to expect. We hope you're going to have lots of questions for us at the end. And so today we're going to, um, I'll start off talking about a little bit of history and background of the WalkWise grassroots education effort. Then I'll turn the time over to Jason. He's going to give the WalkWise presentation overview. And then I'll talk a little bit about our response system and our email survey results. So you'll see some of the results and, and some of the uh, statistics we're working with. Uh, throughout, we have some interactive audience polls. So we hope that you get ready and uh, take those polls. And uh, they'll make this presentation a little bit fun for you. So. Sit back, enjoy your lunch, and uh, we hope you uh, get some really good education from this presentation. Okay, so every time you see this participate slide with the cyclists, get ready to take our interactive poll. Okay, so the first one, so think about this. We're going to be talking about a mainly pedestrian safety today, so we, we want to know kind of what you know. How many pedestrian fatalities were reported in Florida during 2012? Now, I took this just from the latest stats that have come out uh, from NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and as many of you may know, they publish all of the uh, national statistics for all types of things like traffic fatalities, bicycle fatalities, and pedestrian fatalities, so this is where I'm sourcing this from. This is from uh, NHTSA results. Okay, well, let's see. It looks like, um, let's see, we'll give you just a couple more seconds. Looks like a few more people have time to vote. And, okay, let's see. Go ahead and we'll show the poll. Okay, so 27%, um, let's see, well, nope, 36% was the highest that changed. So think that it's 297 followed by a tie for 476 and 617. Um, so how many pedestrian fatalities were reported in Florida? Uh, well, for 2012, remember, it's just one year, there were 476. So 
got it right. I know that 478 was a little bit close, but only one person voted for that. So if you look at the numbers, if you look at solely fatalities, Florida is is the third state. Um, the, the state with the highest number of fatalities with 617 is, is California. So this list you look at, and you have California, Texas, Florida, New York came in at 297, and North Carolina at 197. Now, if you look at the list a different way and you look at the fatalities um, per 100,000, which is another way uh, if you go into the uh, NHTSA information, so they'll give you the, the numbers for per 100,000 because, you know, if you look at California, they're a, they're a pretty populated state, right? So you get a totally different list, almost a totally different list if you look at it per 100,000. So the state with the highest uh, pedestrian fatality rate per 100,000 happens to be Delaware at 2.94, then New Mexico at 2.92, South Carolina file, follows at 2.6, Louisiana is next at 2.5, and then Florida is actually number five on that list. So uh, Florida uh, dropped down to number five on the list uh, per 100,000 fatalities this year from 2011, and we're now at number five. Um, so if you think about that, a lot of people are talking about, you know, the, the states with the highest number of fatalities or the large populated states. However, if you look at per 100,000, uh, Delaware comes in as the number one state followed by New Mexico. So something to think about as you're looking at your statistics, there are different ways to look at um, the fatality rate. And then let's look at bicycle fatalities. This is an interesting list I've given you. How many bicycle fatalities were reported in Florida during 2012? Again, from NHTSA, and look at the list. We've got 122, 24, 4, 7, and 124. So what do you think it is? We'll give you just a few seconds here to vote. Like the votes are coming a little bit slow. You're thinking about those numbers. Okay. Looks like give you a couple more seconds if you haven't voted. Go ahead, you're thinking about it. Okay, so we'll show the poll. It looks like 66% said 122, followed by 25% at 124. I know those are very close numbers. Those are numbers for two states. Um, so what did Florida, 66% um, of you are correct. We had 122, that's reported on NHTSA. They call it pedal cyclists, so, they're, so uh, bicycles and other pedal cyclists are included. So um, you know, it may be someone on a unicycle or, or a different mode like that included. Um, but the number, it was 122. So if you look at this list, um, you're wondering why I had such different numbers. Um, well, this list goes kind of in order of um, the per capita. So Florida is, is number one on that. Um, followed per capita with only 24 is Louisiana. The next one, again, is Delaware. The next one is New Mexico, and 124 for California. Um, so those, if you look at it, that list is actually in order for those states uh, per 100,000. So you can look at the, the numbers, how they vary, California with 124, Florida with 122. Of course, just remember, California has, you know, almost double our population. So if you look at the per 100,000, again, you get somewhat of, of a different list. Okay, so I hope that was informative and helpful. If you want to look further, just go to the NHTSA website and you can look at all the states. I know we had people from outside of Florida, and so if you want to find your state, very easy to do. Just go to that website and the reports are out for 2012 and you can look and see how your state is uh, doing compared to others. Okay, so why Walkwise Tampa Bay? What's going on here? Well, we do have some, some problems that we, we want to solve here. And, you know, the biggest problem is we, we are a large, populous state. We're almost at 20 million, um, and we have a high number of pedestrian and bicycle traffic crashes resulting in injuries and fatalities. And, yes, we want to do everything we can to solve this issue. Now, Florida really has some great things going on. Um, they We have a new Alert Today Alive Tomorrow uh, statewide program that is managed here at Cutter. Um, there are many different uh, programs going on to tackle this problem. I think um, you're, you're going to see that, that there's some good results from the programs that are that are new, original, and uh, Florida really is, uh, is 
a leader in providing these programs, specifically through the Florida Department of Transportation. Um, so here, here was um, a look at, some, at the how I lined them up for the states, and that's what I talked about for the polls. So just the slides, so you can you can look at those for 100,000. So you know, so you know this is just some more information. You can look at kind of what the states are doing and their fatalities, and again, you can look this up on NHTSA. Um, and so again, for 2012, these were the states with the highest fatalities again. This corresponds with the poll that we just took. Um, and something else that, to think about, we talked about exposure rates, fatalities, and then we talked about, um, you know, the difference in the state list that come up. So exposure is something to think about, too. And oftentimes we don't know what the exposure is for pedestrians and bicyclists. So that can make a difference. For example, uh, New York, there may be uh, many more uh, pedestrians. So the so the exposure rate is different as we think about how we're going to tackle the problem and what we're going to do. Um, so another issue we have is, um, you know, Florida is in the spotlight a lot nationally, and we don't want to be in the spotlight for that. We want to show that we are taking action, that we are reducing our fatalities and injuries. These are just two uh, recent um, uh, uh, stories that I pulled off of the website. You can see some of the headings on wide Florida roads were running for dear life. Um, this one from USA Today that came out a few months ago talks about more Americans die while walking than in natural disasters like floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, uh, report says. So, um, you know, a lot of things are going on in the media, and we definitely want to uh, do something about that, and we want to lower our, our rates. You know, even one life lost is too many. Um, and here's, here's something else to think about. Um, the other cost that happened with, with any type of roadway fatality, and this was something I pulled from the National Safety Council. It gives you kind of an idea of what each fatality um, or traffic crash or injury costs. So the National Safety Council estimates the comprehensive cost of each person killed in a traffic crash to be $4.5 million. Um, this is in 2012 dollars. So you can see that they took the number. They went from 2012, so I kind of stuck to 2012 throughout this. They looked at um, the fatal bicycle fatalities and injuries, the pedestrian fatalities and injuries, and came up with the dollars associated with that. And if you add it all together, I mean, it's billions. It's based on the estimates, the total cost of bicycle and pedestrian injuries and fatalities for 2012 was $32 billion. And you're probably wondering what they used in their calculations. So the calculation of the economic cost of injuries includes wage and productivity losses, medical expenses, administrative expenses, motor vehicle damage, and employers' uninsured costs. So they're looking at the comprehensive cost of these injuries and deaths. So something to think about. There is a big cost, and so um, you know if you if you look at this in dollars, you know we really need to take action and um, have some great programs out there. Okay, so a little bit about WalkWise Tampa Bay. This is the education component of the statewide program and the local program for the Florida Department of Transportation. And it really, as you'll see, is a grassroots effort. We go out there and we talk to people every day. We talk about not only pedestrian safety, it is called WalkWise, but we talk about bicycle safety. We talk about driver safety. But when we give the presentations, people in the room are a high percentage are drivers, right? So everyone's a pedestrian. Um, some people in our audience are bicyclists, and then a high percentage, again, are drivers. So we're talking to all of these groups. So it is called WalkWise. However, we really push the driver aspect of it, too. We talk about driver safety and how that plays a role in everything towards pedestrian safety. Um, the initial program was developed about five years ago locally here in the Florida Department of Transportation District 7. So uh, we came up with the idea and we started providing these presentations and it's just really grown. It's expanded to select high emphasis areas statewide, so we're very excited about that. We're going into the Orlando area. Um, we're, pro we're going in and giving presentations this year probably in um, FDOT District 1, so in Lee County. Um, we're looking at all of the areas where we can actually kind of pilot them and make an impact and see how that, that works. 
Um, we are included in the 2015 Highway Safety Plan. There are a lot of great programs in that, and WalkWise is included. And also, um, as you've probably figured this out, where it's managed here by Cutter, and the funding for the program comes from the Florida Department of Transportation. And so, um, WalkWise is the education component, but most of you who work in this field, and I think there were 75% of you were from Florida, as I looked through the names, a lot of you work in local government. And, you know, it, it, education is just one E. And so we need all of the E's working together to really make an impact. So we work extensively with uh, the engineering component, um, the complete streets uh, policies that are taking effect. Uh, also enforcement. We work hand-in-hand -hand with enforcement you know, what they're doing to, to help on, on their end. And so these E's all work together, and education is very, very important. So to date, we've given probably over 1,600 interactive presentations. Jason's going to take you a little bit into a presentation because he's given probably well over 1,000 of those himself personally. And we've been conducting them from 2010 to 2014, and we're going to continue into 2015. We have over 20,000 WalkWise ambassadors who have taken the pledge, and those are the people who have actually sat through one of our WalkWise presentations, taken a pledge, and then signed uh, up to allow us to put their name on the website. So there are many more people who have uh, been through a WalkWise presentation, but th this is our list of ambassadors who have said they're going to go one step further. They're going to actually spread the word for us because it really takes everyone in this effort. Um, so. You know, here's a photo of a presentation. Jason's at the front of the room giving that to a group of people. And they really create an environment where we talk to people, we talk about their experiences, we talk about what, what they're dealing with, we document these things, and then we can really bring this back to try to make things better for them as pedestrian, cyclists, or drivers. And it really is amazing when you get out and talk to people in these group settings the different things that you'll find out that they're having to deal with um, as they uh, move and walk around our communities. This is just a screenshot from our WalkWise website. You can go to WalkWise Tampa Bay or WalkWiseFlorida.com. It will take you here to WalkWise. And if you want to scroll through it, we have um, – here's just a screenshot of our 18,000 to 19,000 uh, names. And you can see we just list a, a name. We list uh, – the city and then the date that they became an ambassador. So the feedback they're receiving is, is they like that, they like to have their name on the list and get the recognition, and they like to feel like they're part of WalkWise and they're going to help us out to make everything safer in their community. So the way that we roll here with WalkWise is we have a lot of tools and we will travel. We go straight out to the people who want us to present and we take a projector with us, we take a laptop with us, we take our audience response system. Uh, sometimes we even take a screen. We set up set up on a uh, beach side, we've set up in uh, different outside transit locations. And so we really have a complete system that we take so that we can go and meet with anyone who needs our presentation or request our presentation. Um, this this program is for adults. However, we do go into high schools upon request. We've had a lot of high schools who have wanted us to come in and talk to um, the high school students, and it seems like this, since this is geared towards adult, it also works very well in a high school setting. Um, so we, so everyone who takes the pledge gets, you'll see in a lot of the photos, a WalkWise reflective backpack. We hand out uh, uh, bike lights for those who need them. If they bring their bikes, we put them on their bikes. We have all kinds of reflective items, and we have a WalkWise bookmark uh, that's very popular in such locations, even as libraries uh, put these out for us um, in Hillsborough County and other counties. And we have all kinds of different really great safety handouts uh, that they can take with them, and they can take some for their neighbors and friends, too, to distribute. Um, this is a screenshot of the audience response system. So this is just invaluable in our presentation. Not only does it collect data, but it makes the audience um, have fun with the presentation because we're, we were very, um, for, you know, fortunately we're just 
surprised by the reaction of people to book this presentation. We've been doing this for almost five years now, and people want us to come back. They love the presentation, and when they see the little response card, it's like playing, you know, it's like they have a game show. They they get to uh, voice the response like you did in the polls, but it's their live. So this little response card, you know, they just exactly like you saw a poll. They get a poll. They get to answer the question, and they have a lot of fun with that. It gives them immediate feedback on the screen. And so they get to talk about the responses. Um, you know, if sometimes they'll, you know, go back and forth and have some banter because they thought what they answered was right and someone else, you know, will argue against why it isn't. So it gets some really good banter going back and forth. All their answers are anonymous and they're stored for reporting. I don't know how many of you have been in a group setting. You ask a question, you try to, try to get people to raise hands. Oftentimes no one will raise their hand or they just do what the entire group does. So this system allows for them to, uh, you know, have a response, it's anonymous, and so we also can see, you know, what people know, and so the whole audience response system was really measuring um, knowledge, and then we were looking at the retention of knowledge with before and after questions, and so the response system is very good in doing that. The information is stored right into the laptop computer, and then we can download it into, um, you know, our, our statistical analysis system and, and look at the results. And again, I think I covered some of this. Responses are stored. Um, we look at the before and after questions. So we see um, it is a short presentation, so we're limited to the questions that we um, are able to ask. Usually the walkwise presentation, sometimes this market is only 15 minutes, but usually it goes for 30 minutes, and most of the time we can't get out of there in under an hour because they're having so much fun and the questions just keep coming in. So we are limited in the uh, questions we can ask because of the presentation format. We want it to still stay fun and exciting for them. Um, so that, that is sort of what the, the time limits are on this. So I'm going to turn the time over now to Jason. He's going to talk a little bit about the presentation and his experiences so you can kind of understand how that works. And I love this photo of him. He was uh, a few years ago, he was out at a a senior center, and uh, they just had a great time with him. So great photo of him uh, having a good time talking about pedestrian safety. So, Jason, I'll turn the time over to you. Thanks, Julie. Uh, yeah, this was the senior center, just me and the ladies, but they enjoyed the presentation, and it really got me to, you know, get a firsthand experience of presenting to a group. This is one of my first presentations, and uh, I enjoyed every minute of it. What's nice is I do meet a lot of people in different groups, and I have this extended discussion with the WalkWise, and as Julie mentioned, sometimes it's a 30-minute, 45-minute presentation because the audience response system gets them re uh, reacting to the questions and builds discussion. You never know how the groups will respond to pedestrian safety. They think, well, that's good for my grandkids, and I go, no, this is for you. This is an adult safety presentation, and a lot of the times they bring in their own experience, like I was hit by a car, really serious injuries, a family member was hit, and it really brings that element of uh, discussion to the room. But um, it opens the dialogue, and uh, as the WalkWise presentation goes along, we do the pledge, and we ask them to pledge to encourage their family, friends, neighbors, even colleagues to walk safe. So we're trying to continue that pledge process um, as we go along with the program. Here's our sample of audiences. Uh, we, it's an adult program. Uh, our focus efforts are in high-risk areas. Um, we go to homeless shelters, uh, low-income areas like around the neighborhoods. Uh, senior centers, we partnered with various senior groups. So we have an administrator who oversees maybe a dozen senior centers. Talk to the administrator, hey, can we get into your senior centers? Talk about pedestrian safety. Even uh, transit riders, we go to the transit hubs, as Julie mentioned before. What I found was very helpful is connecting to the community, going to Rotary Clubs or Kiwanis Clubs. They are so um, a part of their, their respective communities that we, we get more presentations out of that. So it's, it's very helpful to really connect with those that are connected to their communities. And then we go to the high crash corridors. The question I get is, well, who's your audience? It's not kids. It's, well, it's adults. And um, we've reached our target, target audience 
each and every year because of the audience response system. At the end of the year, we compiled the data and we said, wow, we really did a good job at reaching that audience. As we look, 70% uh, of the pedestrian fatalities are male, and then 35% are 45 to 64 years old. So at the end of the year, we're just like, yes, we did it. And, you know, it feels like our goal was definitely accomplished. We look at the uh, time, you know, when are the fatalities occurring? And it's when it's dark out, obviously, because of the lack of visibility. So that's one of our main messages is, you know, being safe and being seen as a pedestrian or a bicyclist. We look at the targeted high crash corridors, and this is a uh, crash map for pedestrian fatalities from 2008 to 2012, just in the Tampa Bay area. And I apologize that it looks like the uh, 1980s game Battleship, but uh, like you sunk my battleship. But it, we really focus on the high crash corridors that are uh, within the, the boxes. And so we'll book presentations along those corridors, and maybe there are arterial roads that are adjacent to those corridors, and we'll really focus on those areas. And um, it's been very successful when it comes to booking this presentation. We have a an outreach coordinator that really takes the time to not only email, but call different groups and organize these, these presentations. Um, so yeah, we're, we're very proud of the efforts we've done as a, as a team. This is one slide we like to show in our presentation. It's the crash statistics. Uh, these are the, from the Florida uh, Traffic Crash Statistics Report from 2012. And we focus on the fatalities and injuries. Um, and usually the, the audience is shocked when they see 473 pedestrian fatalities in one year in the state of Florida. And then we move along to injuries. It's over 7,400 injuries in the state of Florida. And when I say injuries, I really get into that, to that discussion. You know, Julie talked about uh, how much money is spent on those costs of injuries when it comes to bicycle and pedestrian injuries. And injuries can be devastating. I talked to a gentleman at a transit hub. He said he was riding his bike to work, was hit by a truck, you know, was sent to the hospital for not weeks but months, lost his job, you know, the 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 injuries that the, the uh, cost of injuries is, is, is outstanding. The other thing that is mentioned is, well, let's look at the bicyclist fatalities. It doesn't seem to be as many pedestrian or bicycle fatalities as pedestrian fatalities. Well, you look at the ratio, how many people are walking and biking. These 116 bicycle fatalities is a lot. And we do emphasize that one fatality is one too many. So we're, we're going for that zero fatality state. And, um, you know, one way to get the message out is how serious and devastating fatalities and injuries are to communities. So we really try to emphasize that. For the WalkWise presentation, this is our introduction slide. Um, this is a group right here from a local uh, hospital. They are part of a wellness group, so they're really internally getting their employees active and making sure they're getting all the safety information possible so they can spread not only to their employees but to their family friends. Um, and we, and like I said, the audience response system has been very helpful uh, with the program. It keeps the audience engaged. I guess I've been called the Alex Trebek of pedestrian safety, but that's okay with me. So let's let's get it going. It's, it's like a game show. Uh, you know, we talk about pedestrian fatalities, but we like to keep it light in the room so there's more engagement. So let's get the online world engaged in this next question, if you can respond. Where sidewalks are not provided on a roadway, as a pedestrian, you generally should, number one, walk on the shoulder with traffic. Number two, walk on the shoulder against traffic. I'll give you a few seconds. Looks like our responses are still coming in. Okay, final answer. Let's see how the group responded. Oh, sorry. So.
Holes are holes. They're, they're closed. Okay, yeah. they're closed. Yeah, they're closed. Go ahead. Can they see this answer? The answer? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Okay, sorry about that. Um, so 22% of the online world said walk on the shoulder with traffic, and then 77% against traffic. The correct answer is against traffic. You want to walk against traffic so you can see traffic. And what we usually see at our presentations is this. We see this response. It's usually 60, 40 percent. Sometimes we see 50, 50, and you, see, you hear the, the audience go, whoa, I got that wrong, and it builds discussion. This is from a group in Pasco County, the Homeless Coalition. So this is a group. These are a set of 25 people who uh, organize the homeless shelters and the different programs that are, are, are responsible in the homeless shelters. So when you show this slide, it just kind of, sends the message that we're not really sure and we need to get that message out there on what is the correct way to travel as a pedestrian. And here's a photo we, we put into the slide uh, just to build discussion. Like, what do you think about this photo? And, uh, and usually what we hear is, well, there's no sidewalks. There's a bicycle on the sidewalk. It's really close to traffic. There's a pedestrian sharing this space, and that's all true. Um, and the main point is, okay, there's a lack of sidewalks, and maybe it, there's not enough room for the pedestrians. It wasn't built for pedestrian and bicycle travel. And this is true. Since this photo was taken in 2010, they have installed a sidewalk, curb cuts, everything you can imagine. And it just, in a way, I send that message to the audience that we are moving forward. We are making progress as a state and local community for our bicycle pedestrian infrastructure. In infrastructure. So we are making progress as a state for pedestrian bicycle safety. Um, now I'm going to go through the walkwise safety tips, kind of our meat and potatoes of the presentation. We, we created an acronym with a safety tip for each letter, and I will go through that. W, wear bright colors, reflective clothing, night and day to increase your visibility. Uh, be safe and be seen. In this photo, we have a pedestrian walking mid-block. Sometimes at presentations, the audience doesn't see it until I point it out. We're in dark clothing, walking mid-block in a low-lit area. So really, we're trying to get the message out to walk safe and, and be predictable as a pedestrian. Um, a, always be alert. Never text or talk when crossing the, uh, the street. Um, in this case, I call this distracted driving. So I want all pedestrians to be alert. Don't put your life in the hands of a driver. L, look left, right, and left. This is important. Everybody's heard this before, but let's put it into context. Pedestrians are looking for the driver here. Most of the time, the drivers do not stop in this particular intersection. Um, pedestrians do have the walk signal. However, in this case, I took this photo a few years ago, about five drivers just went right through. We want the pedestrians to not only make eye contact, but point to the direction, make a motion to the driver to where they're crossing. In this case, K, know your surroundings. Uh, just because you have the crosswalk, maybe you have a rapid flashing beacon here, doesn't mean you're 100% safe. You need to watch each lane as you cross. Scan the road as you're crossing. W, watch for cars in parking lots. I asked the question, who has the right of way in parking lots? And I'm going to tell you, half the room, say, the driver. So I'm sending the message, pedestrians have the right of way in parking lots, but you still have to watch for drivers. I mentioned impaired walking can be dangerous um, for pedestrians. So uh, there's a strong correlation between pedestrian fatalities and impaired walking. Watch for cars pulling into driveways. Um, many, I actually firsthand saw a, in Orlando, when I was going to a presentation, saw a tr truck pull into a gas station driveway, almost hit a lady crossing, not the street, but across the, cro the uh, driveway. And she was shocked, and the driver just kept going. What I want to like, what I let the audience know is that we need to change our driver culture. We need to be more expecting of the pedestrians. So let's look at this next slide, or next photo. As a pedestrian, pedestrian signal, driver has a green signal. Most of the time I ask who has the right of way, they say the driver. Oh, we can squeeze right through here, we have enough room. We need to change that driver culture. If the pedestrian's waiting here, you still have to yield as a driver uh, for the pedestrian when they have the walk signal. Now it's not just the pedestrian's fault, we need to change our 
pedestrian culture as well. Increase our education, do whatever it takes to get the word out for pedestrian safety. So let's move on. Ready to participate in the next slide. At a crosswalk with a pedestrian signal, you can start crossing with which of the following signals? One, the flashing hand. Two, steady walking. Three, flashing hand with countdown. Four, steady hand. Or five, don't know. When can you begin crossing at a crosswalk? Okay, closing the polls. That looks like our responses are still coming in. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and close the polls. And All right, so 62% say steady walking, 37% say steady hand. The correct answer is steady walking. This is very interesting. Um, we're going to show you what we provide on the slides. So it is steady walking, and here's some examples of what we show. Flashing hand, steady walking, flashing hand with countdown, or steady hand. Um, usually we get this response. Uh, we're not really sure when we can begin. Can you begin when it's flashing or maybe even if there's a countdown? So this is an example of a group we presented to. And this was brought in because many uh, communities were having law enforcement pull them over or stop the pedestrian saying, well, you were not walking safely. You were not exercising that due care. You know, you can't just cross whenever you want. You can only begin crossing when there's a steady walking, which is the answer here. And most of the time it's a warning. Other times, you know, a pedestrian fine will occur. And that's really how enforcement works. Um, the city of Largo is a great example of that. Uh, they did a really good job uh, within Pinellas County of enforcing pedestrian safety in other counties as well. And here's an example of using the crosswalk, giving yourself enough time to cross at a crosswalk. Again, um, if you don't have enough time on the countdown, you can't begin crossing at the countdown. It's not a good time to cross. Wait till the next signal. Even push the button. A lot of pedestrians just stand there. Um, push the button before crossing. Okay, and this is the final slide, but before I go, I'm going to quickly do the walkwise pledge. Uh, as Julie mentioned, I probably did this a thousand times, uh, but this is the first Internet pledge ever. So if you're sitting in a group right now, please raise your right hand and say with me, I pledge to walk wise, bike smart, and drive safely, and spread the word about the importance of pedestrian safety to my friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, and others. Thank you for taking the walk wise pledge, and I'm going to pass it back to Julie. Thanks, Jason. That was a lot of fun, and I think everyone got a good taste of what we do when we're out there in the public giving the walkwise presentation, and I know those of you who did raise your hand and take the pledge, you were smiling a little bit or laughing, and I know we had some groups, so I hope you all raised your hand and took the pledge with Jason, and uh, so it is a lot of fun when we're out there, and then um, everyone gets their uh, reflective items, and, and they're happy, and, and they're going to spread the word for us. Um, why do we do a pledge? Actually, there's some research out there that shows the power of a pledge. So think about this. If someone sits through a presentation and we don't have them take a pledge, they may walk away and, and not do anything. But we think, and there is research to back us up, that social marketing research has shown that taking a written pledge or a pledge with a group, particularly with one's peers or community, is a great motivator for action. And so there is some research out there that it is a great motivator for action, and we have found this out because um, people really do talk about it. They email us afterwards. We get referrals, and people know about the pledge. So we hope that they're more committed. And, again, over 20,000 people have taken the WalkWise pledge. We have um, that many names who have signed up, so we know that number is, is even greater because a lot of people don't want to give us their name, and we that's totally voluntary as we go into the presentation. Okay, a few key findings from our data. So we collect the data, and we just have a couple before and after questions. So if you can imagine, um, the data collection is a little bit limited because of the length of the presentation. And, you know, our goal, uh, you over 1,600 presentations and ongoing, we want them to like the presentation. We want them to learn something. And so the um, questions that we ask um, are limited. But some of the results to share with you, a few key findings. So. Um, before the presentation, 65% uh, of the valid respondents correctly answered that a pedestrian should walk on the shoulder against traffic when sidewalks are not available. You took that question. We saw there were some mixed results. And we, we talk about 
Uh, Jason covered it a little bit, but we do go into depth about uh, why it's important where you walk. Um, you know, Florida has a, a lot of large roadways um, that, that don't have sidewalks. Sometimes you have to walk on the shoulder, so you want to be very careful. And if you look at the um, crash data, um, you, can, you can see how many people are actually hit, injured, or killed walking along the roadways. So immediately after the WalkWise presentation, we, we can look at the, the, the results, and about 90% of valid respondents answered correctly. And this was from data on our statewide program that was collected just from April to September. And then a similar finding was observed for safe bicycle behavior. We asked several questions about bicycle behavior. So before the presentation, 42% of respondents correctly answered bicyclists are allowed to ride on sidewalks. And then afterwards, 93 correctly responded that bicyclists are allowed to ride on sidewalks. You're wondering why is that important? But we talk a lot about uh, where bicyclists should ride. You know, is it safer to ride with traffic or against traffic when you're on a sidewalk? So we really delve into some of the safety aspects. So we think it's important um, just that they understand um, their there is something um, that they need to know about bicycles riding on sidewalks and that they have the rights and duties of pedestrians also. Um, this is a, a, a table that I took um, from a question. This is the icebreaker that we asked. We didn't ask you this one, but we had some uh, some different, more detailed uh, polls that we took with you. But we just as an icebreaker, and Jason can, you know, he likes this question because it gets them going. It, it kind of gets them to know how to use the audience response system. So we just asked them which state consistently leads the nation in bicycle and pedestrian fatalities. You can see on this one, um, the highest percent, the valid, valid respondents, 68% uh, answered Florida, followed by 18% New York and 10% California. And with that question, again, each one of these poll questions brings about really great conversation about what's going on in our state. Okay, this one is a question we asked if bicyclists riding on a roadway against traffic is riding legally. Um, so, of course, you know that if you ride on a roadway against traffic, you are not riding legally. So the opposite is with the pedestrian, but the bicycle is a legal vehicle. So you can see on this one, 71% um, said it was false and 28% said it was true. So we do talk about how bicycle is a legal vehicle, and we talk about the dangers of riding against traffic. Um, we also asked them, what do they, this is at the very end, we asked this as one of our last questions. We asked them, what do you believe is the most important behavior you can practice? You can see 60% of them say, be alert, expect the unexpected, followed by 21% say, follow the law. We do talk a lot about laws. We hand out little law books that they can take with them, and we do talk about why the laws were created and what they mean as a pedestrian or a cyclist or a driver. And we didn't show you any of the driver tips, but we do have driver and bicycle tips in the presentation, just like the walkwise tips. Because of the length of time we have here, we just showed you the walkwise tips. We do have driver tips, too. So we talk to the drivers about how they need to be alert and how they need to watch for pedestrians. We talk about the dark time hours as a driver, and we give them a lot of tips and it creates a really good awareness for people who are driving. Okay, um, then we just completed a WalkWise email survey. I wanted to show you some of those results. So what we did was after uh, someone took, we sat through a WalkWise presentation and gave us their email address, we sent them a follow-up survey, and we could only send those to the valid um, emails that we could read, and then it was limited based on who wanted to give us their name. So this was based on um, 215 total responses. That was during a short period of time this year. We sent it out to 517 ambassadors who did provide their email address. So I'll show you a little bit about what they had to say. So when they were asked this question again about um, when sidewalks are not provided, 92% um, said they would walk against traffic. And then uh, the one about the sidewalk, 94% answered that that was true. Uh, we asked them to rate our overall presentation. We did have some other questions uh, about the presentation. This is just one, but as you can see, 61 said excellent, and 33% said very good. So we feel good about that. And um, this was, again, an anonymous email survey that they took. And this one is really important, I think, because we asked them, and, you know, they could have disagreed with us. They said, now that I am a WalkWise ambassador, I plan to share my knowledge about pedestrian safety with my friends, family, coworkers, and others. Because really the only way this program is going to work is if everyone out there in the community is listening to us and then they are helping us spread the word. We cannot do it alone. 
we need them to spread the word and talk and make this something that is acknowledged by everyone, drivers, pedestrians, um, cyclists, wh whoever is out there using the road. So 61% said they strongly agree and 33% said they agree that they, as amb our ambassadors, would spread the word for us. And when we do, after they take the survey, um, if they give us their name, they don't have to. We send them a T-shirt and some other items that they can use. And we also give um, presenters information they can use to spread the word. So we try to give them a little toolbox. Um, so really, you know, this is just a, a summary of findings that I just talked about. But, you know, one of the goals of this project was to increase the knowledge level of safety actions for pedestrians and drivers. We feel that it is doing a good job of doing that. Um, and we can see from the results of this survey that, that they are enjoying it. We get a lot of referrals. And Jason gets a high amount of written thank you letters and commendations, too, which is something you don't see a lot of times when you go out about and give presentations. We get a lot of people actually take the time to get to send um, us, you know, a written letter saying, this was great. We want to do this for someone else, for a different group. Um, future plans. What are we doing for future plans? We're expanding right now walkwise. Um, statewide very slowly because we're doing it, um, you know, in a way that it's going to be effective. And as you can see, our toolkits, you have to have the right person giving the presentation. They have to be really committed and knowledgeable about uh, the laws in Florida for pedestrians, bicycles, and drivers. They have to be passionate about it. And so uh, we ha we have, we're doing this slowly because we have to do it right. Um, I don't think Jason talked about sweeps. We have this um, really innovative way that we go to those high uh, crash corridors and we just walk in and we talk to people and we give them information that they can pass out to customers or to their employees and we try to book a presentation with their employees um, because we're trying to reach those people along those corridors. So we'll stop in at businesses, apartment complexes, schools, and we, we talk to people. We really, you know, we get to know them. Um, and Another plan that we have and something that's going on, I know there's a question about uh, Fletcher Avenue, so I look forward to answering that. But we're, we're doing a special project with uh, FDOT District 7, and we're utilizing a social marketing framework, not social media, so I put a little definition of it. Um, it can lead to social media, but social marketing is much more. It's really um, a systematic approach that we're going to look at developing activities, you know, looking at a behavior, um, you know, is this something that – that we need to to help with and change that's going to benefit for the benefit of individuals and society. So Fletcher Avenue Complete Streets is something that's part of um, one of my one of my uh, part of my work that I'm doing, and uh, I can talk a little bit more about that as we answer the question. And so that's pretty much it. It looks like Stephanie, we have um, a little bit of time for Q and A. So Jason, I know you're there to answer questions too. So. Okay. We will turn it over to Stephanie for questions. All right. Thank you um, very much, Julie and um, Jason. Um, before we get started, I'd like to remind everybody how to ask questions using the Q&A manager that is located in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. Simply click the Q&A box, um, type in either your question and or comment, click ask, and then I will read that question or comment to um, Julie and, and Jason, and they will respond uh, Okay, so our first question, Julie, as you sort of mentioned, was um, there was a question about the Complete Streets project going along um, Fletcher Avenue from um, west of, of USF. Um, in the past, many, uh, many pedestrians were noted to jaywalk, a very unsafe thing to do um, on that uh, arterial. Has there been any significant uh, re reduction in pedestrian accidents since the implementation of the Complete Streets project on Fletcher Avenue? Okay, that's a great question, and it just happens to be that Fletcher Avenue is part of uh, my scope of work under Walkwise with District 7 and Hillsborough County. Uh, that street is actually a local county street, so Hillsborough County was responsible for implementing the Complete Streets project there. Um, so that project has just been completed, and I believe, um, I haven't been out there in the last few days, but they just finally turned all of the flashing yellow lights on the uh, mid-block crossings. So we, we don't have um, any results yet if there's been a reduction in pedestrian accidents because um, I think the ribbon cutting scheduled in a few weeks. 
but we have been out there uh, making observations. So to give you a little bit of background on what we're doing, um, we're, we're taking a social marketing framework approach to it. We've gone out um, and done observations and surveys on um, different intersections, and we found out some interesting things about, you know, who who is using uh, Fletcher. We found just uh, uh, some of the things we found out, you know, there's a, a high percentage of, of males, um, people live very close to the corridor. Um, many of them are, are walking along that street for errands or go to retail or go to the transit stops. So we're, we're taking the approach that we're, we're looking at who's utilizing Fletcher Avenue, and then um, we're making observations on what's going on with the behavior. So um, we will have a report on that. It would be a good topic for a webinar in the future. Um, but what we've seen so far is that, um, you know, there are, it, it's a complete street now. It has bike lanes. It has, um, the speed limit was lowered. Uh, there are mid-block crossings. There is one um, stop near, I don't know if you're familiar, but as you enter it, there is actually a, uh, a, I believe it's called a hawk beacon that, that has a red light that people can push in it and it will actually stop traffic. So there's going to be some significant changes going on. Now, our role with WalkWise is that you can make a complete street, but you still have to educate people as to as to how to use it and what, what is going on. And, you know, it's a little bit different for people who are using it and specifically drivers. So I know that this week enforcement is out also. It's, it's really a 3E approach. So you have the engineering through the complete streets. You have enforcement. And I know right now they're just uh, writing warnings for drivers who are violating um, the pedestrian um, crossings. So um, there will be warnings, and so and then we will go out and provide the education. So we've been doing sweeps along Fletcher. We've been doing walkwise presentations. Uh, we implemented um, a look at the street into our presentation. And so it's really a 3E approach, but it's so new right now that I don't have any uh, results to tell you. But I will I will have something, and we'll keep everyone updated on how that goes because it's very exciting that Hillsborough County, um, you know, made the commitment to make that a complete street because it is a, it is a very high crash corridor. Jason showed you the map, and that was included on uh, the mapping he showed you. So we'll keep you updated. Thank you, Julie. Um, I have another question that says, um, do you offer a uh, train-the-trainer program? Um, you know, that is something that we are working on right now, and specifically as we move statewide. So we we have we do have a train-the-trainer program, but we just haven't really moved it out to offer it to anyone. Um, we specifically moved it into the counties where WalkWise um, you know, where we're piloting it, but that is something that is on our list of actions to do because if if someone, you know, has someone who who is who is a would be a great presenter and they want to take part in this, we're we're looking at that. So you can contact me if you are interested in train the trainer because I'm compiling compiling a list right now of people um, who would like to be trained and who would like to go out and help us with the program because part of the vision is we really need to utilize everyone we can. And so if we can kind of be the catalyst to organizing these groups of, you know, volunteer presenters, then we want to do that. So it's in its initial stages. And if you are interested in being part of that, please send me an email. My email is on the slide, and we would love to get you involved. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to – we we will take a couple more questions, but I would like to remind everybody to please take a, a few seconds to fill out the um, evaluation on your screen. Um, it will be vital um, to, to J both Jason and Julie for feedback from this presentation as well. Give, give us some additional um, ideas for presentations in the future. Um, Julie, this question says, do you have some more specifics about the pedestrians' and injuries and fatalities, such as how many were hit while walking with traffic versus against traffic, and how many were bike ped accidents? You know, we, we do, and, you know, we get our information. Well, we get it from multiple sources. Like, if you want to go and look on the Florida Highway and Motor Vehicles website, there are all kinds of reports um, that you can look at, and they do delve into um, you know, 
how how the incident happened, what time of day, all those things that we're looking at, um, we found our information on that website. But then we also, of course, work locally, um, you know, with our FDOT District 7, and they also give us some of those results that we that we may get quite a bit earlier than they're going to show up on um, that state website. So there are multiple sources that you can look at. If I don't know if you're here in Florida, but if you if you can go to that website. Um, if you want to send me an email also, I can send you a list of websites that um, we utilize. You know, you can delve into the FAR system, which is the Fatality Analyst Reporting System on NHTSA. And you can actually, if you go in there, you can you can look at all kinds of different um, types of information that you may need to know and that will help you with your program. So, and then also you can also rely on you know, your MPOs, you can your your counties, your cities, your FDOTs, they're all going to be able to give you some valuable information. So, you know, just to give me some more specifics, please send me an email. If you're if you're here in Florida, I can help you out. If you're in a different state, I can also uh, send you some information on how you could uh, get that information that you need regarding the, the further in-depth information on each specific crash. Okay, Julie, it looks like we've hit um, our 1 o'clock time limit. I'm going to ask okay. you one more question, and then we'll, okay. we'll, we'll call it, uh, call it the end of today. Um, it says um, you mentioned um, needing to change the perception of the media from the focus on dangers and, assist and statistics um, to a focus on how and what they're doing to improve conditions, educate citizens, and lower the number of injuries and fatalities. Um, what do you, what ha have you done and or what relationships with the media have you uh, done to cultivate in order to do this and uh, what and have you had much success? Okay, yes. You know, we don't always want the focus on um, to be negative. And just quickly with the time we have, I'll, I'll give you one quick example. One thing we did um, along Gulf Boulevard, Gulf Boulevard um, is along the beaches in Pinellas County. Um, we worked with the Beaches Chamber and we worked with all the different mayors along Gulf Boulevard and we came up with a concept called um, key to safety. And what the key to safety was, it's a little card that every hotel along Gulf Boulevard has the option to use and they give it to every guest who checks in and um, it has the walkways tips on it. So it educates the, the, the visitors because the visitors were having a hard time crossing over to the restaurants and such, but it also educates the employees. And what we did with that, why the media was involved, is we've gotten a lot of great media about that, how you know, we're working to really um, help uh, and partner with, you know, public and private. And so that's an example of what we do. We try to look at our partnerships, public-private partnerships, and then um, I'll usually work with um, my local media contact at FDOT to issue a press release um, or with another entity who wants to issue a press release. And we usually get quite a few stories. And also another good way to do that is um, by some of the events that we've formulated and had. We do a lot of um, encouragement, too. That's another E that oftentimes gets forgotten. And so there's an encouragement portion, too, that we work with. So we like to um, have some really great events. We did um, some rides, some bicycle rides with the mayors on on bike to work day, and then we, we get some really great media about how um, bicycling is increasing and walking is increasing, and so that's that's kind of a good angle to get the good media out there. And so, yes, we've had some good success with that, and so you can look at some um, very good partnerships, and the Alert Today Live Tomorrow program has really been successful with that, too, and getting some really good media on how they're working to lower um the crash rates in our state. And so you can, definitely a good question, you can angle that towards uh, great media. Okay. Thank you very much, Julie um, and Jason, for this very informative um, presentation. Again, if you haven't already completed the evaluation, I do ask that you just take a quick second and, and complete that. Um, we will keep it up for the next um, 30 minutes or so. Um, I'd like to thank everybody for attending today's Cutter webcast. We will be back um, in, in two weeks um, with another topic, so please be on the lookout for those announcements. And we'll see you again. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.